Hello my dear friends, you're on the Military Summary Channel and today we'll discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 28th of August. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so stay tuned till the end of the video. And first we're going to discuss the report of Minister of Defense of Russian Federation. They gave us a lot of very interesting numbers. The Russians are saying that the previous hours they attacked this 95th Air Assault Brigade and they attacked Slovensk. There was a lot of rocket attacks in this area and the Russians are saying that this 95th Air Assault Brigade lost up to 150 soldiers and 10 armored vehicles. Furthermore, if we uh, are talking about the losses in this brigade, brigade since the beginning of July, this brigade lost more than 1050 soldiers. That's a lot. The main area, responsibility area of this brigade is the forest around the Slavyansk, like in front of Izum Bridgehead. As you know, the Russians are trying to crack this area, try to encircle, and that's why they're trying to hunt this brigade, and they're very successful in that. Furthermore, the Russians are saying that they attacked this town, Slavyansk. It's the heart of Donbass Ark operation. They attacked the training center. And as a result of that attack, the Ukrainians lost around 100 soldiers. The Russians are not saying uh, the brigade these uh, forces belong to, so it was some kind of maybe reserves. And after training centers, the Ukrainians were sending them and fulfilling them any uh, every other brigade in this front line. Who knows? Another important update are coming from Artemovsk, from Bakhmut area, from this small town. As you know, the Russians are trying to storm this area from three sides, from the north in the direction of Solidar, in the middle part in Artemovsk and from the south, trying to attack Kadema, Opetna, Dacha, Zaitsev, Vesola, Dalina. There the Russians told us that uh, 241st uh, Defense Brigade, to be more precise, the 204th Battalion of this brigade, lost its combat capability. The Russians are saying that the losses of this brigade is more than 60%. It's a territorial defense brigade. So that's why the Ukrainians decided to uh, move this brigade from the front line uh, in direction of Kiev to fulfill, to regroup and so on. So I suppose that the next days we're going to see another advances in this area from the Russian side. If we're talking about the territory expansion and so on, uh, yesterday we got the first update that the Russians managed to take control over Kadema. This one, this Kadema. Uh, there is like an icon promotion. Yesterday in the evening we got update that Kadema has fallen, fell totally, that the Russians took control over this town. But this morning we got more updates from this area and now the Russians are saying that yes, the, uh, the Russians, they entered this town, they established control over some of this town. Uh, but they haven't established the entire control over this area. So I suppose that they control something around 50% of this area and no more. And But I suppose that if the Russians entered the uh, east part of this town, so I suppose that maybe in a few days they're going to clear this area totally. And after that, they will be able to concentrate their offensive operation in direction of Kurdjumovka from Kadema's side. Furthermore, we know that according to the Russian updates, the previous Russian updates, they control Dacha and Zaitsev on the south. So as you can see, they have a very interesting and powerful bridgehead in this area. And now they're able to develop their offensive operation in any of these directions or New York Tarias agglomeration or Konstantinovka, or they are able to move in direction of Yarcha, Sofiar or Bakhmut Artemovsk. If we take a look at the Russian sources map, there are also a lot of updates about the ammo depot. If you take a look at Kherson district, you see that the Russians destroyed a few ammo depots in this area. Uh, the main important uh, warehouse is that located on the north from the bridgehead that the Ukrainians used to have during the previous week. But the Russians, as we know, there is some kind of artillery back and uh, the Russians allow the Ukrainians to move forces in this back, but then they're trying to reduce them. So, as you know, this is the area where the Russians are trying to develop some offensive operation in the direction of Nikolaev. Uh, if we're talking about Energodar, the Ukrainians continue shelling this town, trying to attack in the Russian forces, according to the Ukrainian sources, there are a lot of Russian sources in the area of this power plant. So that's why from Nikopol and the territory from the east from Nikopol, they're trying to attack and shell this area with artillery. Uh, the Russians also, as you can see, 
uh, destroyed few town few buildings like oil refinery in this area near Nikopol and some warehouse ammo depot in this area so they're trying to reduce the Ukrainian attacks as much as possible uh, a very important update are coming from this town Vasilkovka this is the uh, this is the safe zone according to the Russian and Ukrainian negotiations uh, nobody fights in this area uh, because this road is the only safe road that let's say people from Zaporozhye Kherson district are able to cross the border the front line and to enter Ukraine or the Ukrainians are able to if they want to um, return to Zaporozhye and, Kok and uh, Kherson they can use this road to return home because as you know when the Russians entered this area a lot of people left this territory because of war and because of uh, they loved Ukraine and so on but now the Russians are saying that there is a big line in this area and the Ukrainians before winter period before autumn decided to return back to their homes because we understand that on the western part of Ukraine there is no work uh, as I know, uh, you need to rent apartments. There is no free apartments for people from the eastern part of Ukraine, east part of Ukraine. So that's why people decide to return because the Russians are paying salary, paying uh, some social payments and so on. So at least they will be able to survive during the upcoming winter. If we're talking about Donetsk, as you can see, Donetsk is under very heavy shelling, under very heavy fire. There is no changes on the front line. The Russians are just attacking some uh, headquarters like 54th mechanized brigade in the area of Kurahova. Uh, the Russians destroyed few warehouses in this area, trying to reduce the Ukra Ukrainians' possibilities in this area of their of their counteroffensive operation. If we are talking about the Bakhmut, as we discussed, the losses of 2241st uh, territory brigade and lost combat capability. Some icons saying that the Russians entered promotion, entered Kadema, uh, but there is not much changes as well. Uh, as you can see, the front line is stable, but but now let's discuss about one of the most important updates that we got today. As you know, I told you uh, a few videos ago that on 11th of September and the beginning of September, there are going to be some votings on Kherson, this one territory, and Zaporozhye. And uh, the question will be, do, this, do you, the citizens of this area, want... Uh, to join the T Russian Federation and we understand that of course uh, these people will vote for sure and these two territories is going to become a part of Russian Federation this is the plan and in the beginning of September it's less than two weeks uh, to this uh, situation and if you remember I told you one thing that as soon as these territories is going to become a part of Russian Federation the Russians will have, they will have possibilities, and it's not like possibilities, it's like their requirements. They need to move, they are able, they can move their uh, main army in this direction. Uh, their main army, not like uh, forces, professional forces who is uh, under contract or something like this, they will be, they will move the conscripts in this area. And the thing is, the thing is that it's not so easy to tell the truth. For example, if you want to move forces in this direction, it will be spotted. Uh, at least the Western intelligence will be able to spot all movements on the railroads and they do this all the time. So the question is, from my side, was when uh, would we see these updates uh, in the Western media? And today we got this update. If we take a look at the Western sources map, you're going to see one important icon, this one. It's like railroad, like a train on the icon. But this icon says that the Russians completed their creating and completed their fulfilling of the third Russian military corps. Third Russian military corps. What does what is it? What is third Russian military corps? The Western sources are saying that the, the number of infantry of soldiers in this third uh, Russian military corps is up to 15,000 soldiers. Uh, the Western sources are saying that uh, this uh, third military corps started, uh, was created in May, and uh, uh, from May since uh, the end of August, the, there were a lot of trainings, a lot of maneuvers and so on in this core. Uh, the Russians were trying to prepare a very powerful fist and uh, its training, its creation was completed. 
and now the Russians are moving this core in direction of the south of Ukraine. This is the town by the name of Rostov na Donu. As you can see, this is a very important logistics center. There are a lot of railroads. There are also some ports. There is road to Taganrog. There are military port there. At least the Russians are able to use this port as a military port and transfer troops and equipment further. But the thing is that uh, the important update from the Western sources, uh, they were saying that the Russians couldn't create a very professional core because of the fact that they couldn't find soldiers, infantry to this core. And also they, uh, they're they adding this, that um, mainly, not in mainly, but there were cases uh, that even the Russians uh, used people from prisons and let's say people from street to complete creating of this core. Very interesting updates and maybe there is some kind of truth, but the thing is that the Western sources are saying and um, then we will discuss what the Russians are saying about this core. But the Western sources are saying that this core will be equipped with the most modern, most powerful armored vehicles and armored weapon the Russians have. So this core, according to the Western sources, is up to 15,000 soldiers. They're still in Rostov and Donu. Maybe the Russians started their transferring on the territory of the Ukraine. Uh, we will discuss the way the Russians can use to transfer in this core on the territory of the south of Ukraine. So, uh, according to the Western sources, this core will be uh, filled with, let's say, BMP-3. It's the most modern, the most armored um, uh, transport uh, vehicle for the troops. Uh, also, this core will be equipped with T-18, T-80 tanks with the most modern, uh, let's say, uh, version. And of course, this core will have the T-90, the most powerful and modern tanks the Russians have. So, as you can see, Better 3, it's, it's like armored vehicles, transport for the troops. T-80, one of the most modern and powerful tanks in the Russian army, and T-90. And to tell the truth, if the Western sources are saying that this core was uh, f filled with, let's say, prisoners and people from street, I'm not sure that these guys are able to handle with these tanks and these armored vehicles. So I suppose that that was some kind of speculation. But now let's discuss about the Russian version of this third Russian core. According to the Russian sources, uh, the number of soldiers in this third Russian Corps is from 40,000 soldiers up to 60,000 soldiers. Not 15, as the Western sources are saying, but three times more. And the Russians moved this Corps in the south of Russian Federation. They concentrated this army in the south, and now they will they're start their movement in the direction of the south of Ukraine. Uh, a lot of military experts um, believe that the number of 15 is some kind of speculation, maybe just to not to make panic on the territory of Ukraine, because we understand that 40,000 soldiers, let's say like the minimal number, according to the Russian sources, that's a lot. That's something around 35 BTGs, according to the Russian sources, who are talking about the south of Ukraine, about the area from this Vasilki towards Donetsk, there are around already there are around 50,000 BTGs, and now the Russians, according to their information, are moving another 35 or even more BTGs if the, the number of this uh, core is around 60,000. That's a lot. That's really a lot. And this number is not the number of people from street and prisoners, because as I told you, this core is equipped with the most modern tanks. I suppose that also this core is going to be equipped with Iranian drones. So I suppose that there are very professional guys in this core and they're moving to this house. And the question is where the Russians are planning to move this core. There are two options because there are two railroads. The first one railroad that leads towards Donetsk area. In this case, this core will be some kind of help uh, that will crack and ruin the Ukrainians in the area between Avdiivka and Marinka. If you remember, um, maybe you, didn't, you don't know, but yesterday the British the United Kingdom intelligence said that the Russians are able and they will, according to the United Kingdom intelligence, encircle Avdiivka in 20 days. 
so maybe this is some kind of a plan the russians are moving these uh, these 40 or 60,000 soldiers infantry with the modern tanks more than equipment drones in direction of donetsk the one purpose to help the russians who were uh, who were trying to who are trying to crack pesky krasnogorovka marinka avdeevka and with this 40,000 of course uh, everything will be much more faster than we see right now this is the first option because this is the first railroad. We understand that the Russians are not going to use this 50,000 and the move with the local roads. It will, it will take months to relocate these forces in the direction of Donetsk. And another railroad leads to the south, then to the Crimea, and from Crimea to Kherson district. This is another road that the Russians can use to relocate these forces. And in this case, in this case, the Russians with this core are planning to encircle Nikolaev and Odessa. It's a very interesting situation because the Russians maybe still keep these forces here and the Ukrainians don't know where are they planning to move them. Because for the Ukrainians, if the, they see that the Russians move them in the direction of Kherson, they will have to transfer, regroup a lot of forces from Donbas arc operation in direction of Nikolaev Kherson and they are able to do this just with one these two ways with the bridges from Zaporozhye and from Dnipro imagine yourself if the Russians are sending 40,000 soldiers in direction of Kherson and the Ukrainians understand that they need to transfer a lot of infantry uh, from Donbas arc operation in direction of Kherson and they will use these bridges of course the Russians will be able to reduce the Ukrainian forces as much as possible just during this relocation of course there is another way how the Russians can transfer uh, these forces they can get in direction of Taganrog and using ports they are able to transfer their forces in direction of Mariupol or in direction of Berdyansk these two towns and also from this direction they will be able to establish to relocate their forces in Zaporozhye anyway it's like the third way but i suppose that this third option is going to take a lot of time to transport the forces using the uh f using the fleet and so on so i suppose that the russians are my projection is that the russians are going to move this core in direction of Kherson for many reasons and first of all is that uh, the russians achieved some success in this area they have already collected up to uh, 25 BTGs in this area. If you remember, the Ukrainians announced about counter-offensive operation and they forced the Russians to move a lot of forces from the south, trying to help and to be on the safe side uh, in case if the Ukrainians decide to start offensive operation. But the Ukrainians didn't start with anything because uh, there was a lot of problem in Avdiivka area. But the Russians decided not to move back these forces and they decided to move another core another 35 or even more BTGs in this area and uh, now if the Russians send their forces here the Ukrainians need to do some relocations a lot of Ukrainians will be reduced during this relocation in case if the Ukrainians are not doing any relocation or any regrouping of course the forces located in the south will be defeated furthermore if we're talking about in this area about the south I understand i understand that this area has more value for the russians at least as soon as the russians establish control over odessa and nikolaev over this area and they connect with trendistania they can start the process of finishing this war at least this uh, part of this war at least they can freeze the conflict for a few years for maybe uh, maybe a few months and they, then they will be able to start another stage of this conflict the next year the next spring let's say and i'm not sure that ukrainians are able to survive during this winter because of winter because of winter if the russians move their forces in direction of donetsk they will crack this net as well and at least they will compl complete one of their goal to liberate according to the russian understanding of the special operation the Donbass district, Donetsk district and Lugansk district. At least they will be able to complete something and it's also big progress for them. But in this case, the Ukrainians still have connection with the world using their support and supplies from the Western countries and so on. 
So this is a very dangerous area and the Russians have a lot of problems with this area. Furthermore, if you know, the United Kingdom uh, brought uh, some, mm, some drones, like uh, um, submarine drones, and of course the Russians understand that it might be a very big problem if they don't solve issue with the uh, with these the final area where the Ukrainians have access to the sea. So I suppose that the south the vital area. So let's see. Anyway, anyway, the referendum, the votings is less than two in two weeks. The Russians, as we discussed, are moving the real core, third core, uh, to the south of Ukraine. And uh, let's see. But I suppose that the autumn campaign is going to be very interesting, very interesting, because this autumn campaign is going to end somewhere in the end of November and starting from December. I'm not sure that there are going to be a lot of movements only in case if entire Ukrainian army is going to collapse. Then, of course, we're going to see a lot of movements from the Russians, but it will be something like entering the towns and, uh, and retreating of Ukrainian army. That's it. And that's it for today. Military Summary Channel reminds you that we condemn any violence in Ukraine. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes. Join my Patreon. And have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye.